Hey, how's it going? Rob here. This is my 2021 Trek Rail. I bought the lowest spec that I could find, the aluminium one, because I had quite a few parts that I wanted to swap around and change. Now, I've done quite a few different things and different experiments with the, uh, the bike and the suspension, and I wanted to share a few of those changes. First off, I got rid of the stock RockShox 35 fork. I don't really like that fork so much. It's quite a budget fork, and when you put it on something as capable as the rail, it's one of the big things that lets it down. So I swapped the RockShox 35 over to a Zeb. Then I put this Lyric on in 160, but I'm gonna put the Zeb back on. This is my favorite fork. It has such a different feeling over the Lyric. It's really hard to put into words, but I would say the feeling of the steering is more direct. It's a little bit plusher. This feels off the top and it's 170 mil of travel, looks pretty beefy and burly. I think it suits the aesthetics of the bike, but the performance is noticeable between the Lyric and the Zeb. So I'm just gonna pop this one back on and then I'll show you all the changes that I've made to this uh, aluminum base model Trek Rail 5 and it came with a 625 watt hour battery. I know that battery isn't available in all markets, but in the UK, they do the base level Trek Rail 5 with a 625 battery. It's a little bit more expensive, but I feel the benefits of a 625 battery are well worth it for that extra few hundred quid or whatever it was. Anyway, I'm gonna pop this one on, uh, it won't take me long, and then we'll go through all the changes that I've made to the bike. Well, by the way, if you're riding a lot in winter, this is fantastic. This is a very small little GoPro mount and a lot of lights have GoPro mount attachments that you can buy. Instead of strapping it around the bars, I found this, it was like five quid on eBay, and it just makes the light stay put in a single position. Neat little hack for you. If you wanna pop your bike light on your stem, five quid off of eBay, boom, job done. Lyric off, nice and easy, really quick. Good fork, the Lyric. It's a decent performer. This is like a full-on enduro fork, really. But once you go over to the Zeb, you can definitely feel the difference. The Zeb, to me, just feels like it tracks corners so precisely, and it doesn't get deflected off, so it holds lines really well. All right, there you go. RockShox Zeb installed. Simple to do. Now, the Zeb is 170 mil in travel and the Lyric and the stock setup is 160. So it does slacken the bike out a little bit, probably by half a degree. So it's gonna be around about 64 degrees, the head angle now, but I do prefer the way that the Zeb feels. And a lot of people suggest that actually a Zeb is maybe overkill for regular trail riding, but I can notice a difference on the trails. It tracks corners and berms a lot better. It just feels like you are on a more stable bike, a more stable all-round bike. And, you know, I'm 85 kilos, so I think maybe I notice it a little bit more than if uh, I was a little bit lighter. And also now we're at 170 mil travel. There's less binding on the fork because uh, of the thicker stanchion. So let's take a look at the drivetrain, the controls. So I went with a Shimano XT drivetrain, I think it is the best feeling shifting drivetrain on the market and I've used both the SRAM high-end stuff and it's super great, the wireless stuff, but I do prefer the actual feeling of shifting through a cable and feeling it click. I think that, um, what is it, that kind of feedback that you get from a physical click cannot yet be replicated by just a button and I don't know, it's like in a car or on a phone or a stereo, a dial to me, that kind of analog feeling that you get is preferred over just a digital slider. So I do prefer the clicker of the uh, Shimano and I do like the crispness of the shifts as well, especially under load with the Shimano Hyperglide Plus system, shifts beautifully. So Shimano XT and the brakes, I am super impressed with the base level Shimano Dior 4 pot brakes. As far as I can tell, they're the same in terms of power as the Shimano XT brakes. The lever's slightly different, the material is slightly different, 
and it doesn't have the servo wave thing that Shimano quote. Honestly, I cannot really tell too much of a difference just for regular trail riding in the south of the UK. The Shimano Dior four pot brakes, just the base level M6120, I think they're called, are brilliant and they're cheap, like really cheap. So personally, I think that they're the best bang for buck brake that you can get. You get that nice Shimano feel and it really neatly integrates with the Shimano XT shifter. So it's just that single clamp that you have on the bar so it looks fairly clean. Uh, dropper post, I've got the one-up components dropper in 210 mil. So you get a massive drop and I'm six foot three. So I really do appreciate a 200 mil plus dropper. And the dropper you can actually change, I think up to 20 mil in drop size. So you can go down a further 20 mil. So if you get the 210, you can actually get a little spacer in there, a little shim that you can change the drop down to 190 mil if you don't quite need the full 210 mil. But I like it at 210, works really well and Ergon grips, and then I've just got the standard Trek uh, Bontrager bars, and I think they're, at, yeah, they're 800 mil wide. The wheels have made a massive difference to the way that this bike feels. I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty exotic wheels. They're pretty expensive. They're DT Swiss carbon rims, HXC 1200, they're called. They're built for e-bikes. They are, they're light, but they're not like super, super light. I think they weigh, 1.7 kilos, 1700 grams for the wheel set thereabouts, which uh, is pretty light for a wheel set, but not like on the so light it's gonna break scale. They're 29 a front and rear, and I have experimented with the bike with mullet setup as well with a 170 fork. And in my experience, the Trek rail performs, it's funny this, isn't it? It performs sweet with the 29 a setup front and rear. The mullet slackens it out quite a bit, especially if you're using a 170 fork. It was like at like 63 and a half degree head angle and it just slowed it down a little bit. And if I was like sending it down some enduro style track or downhill, more downhill orientated tracks, that setup would be great. But for regular trail enduro riding, the 29er front and rear is the, the setup that I'm sticking to at the moment. I do like experimenting, so I'll probably change it around a little bit, but I felt you lost a little bit of that liveliness that you get from the stock 29er setup. If you've got a 27 inch wheel at the rear, you can definitely fit it, see what you think. But in my experience for everyday riding, the 29er setup, front and rear is really decent. Shimano XT cassette, Shimano XT rear mech. And for tires, cause it's super muddy in the UK, I've got the shorty, on the front, Maxxis Shorty 2.5, and I've gone for a 2.4 DHR2 on the rear. And actually tires does make quite a big difference in terms of the way that the bike feels and affects the acceleration response, the agility of the bike, the nimbleness, and a lot of bikes are coming with massive thick carcass tires, which are brilliant for like super rocky, downhill, full, when you're gonna give the bike an absolute batter in there, brilliant. But I'm riding the Surrey Hills, which is wet, muddy, rooty more than rocky. There's no real rocks or no big kind of gnarly terrain there. So I've gone back down to a 2.4 on the rear and a 2.5 at the front. And I'm just using the regular XO compound. It's not even XO plus. And touch wood right now, uh, over the past couple of months, I've not got a single puncher and I've completed over 350 miles on this bike, not one puncher. So um, tires make a massive difference in terms of the weight and the rolling resistance of the bike. So if you're getting a super heavy 1.3 kilo tire with a really sticky compound, A, it's not gonna feel quite as lively to ride that bike and B, it's gonna create a little bit more drag, so you're not gonna get quite the same battery uh, distance. You're not gonna get quite the same range, basically. Those tires are brilliant if you need a thick carcass, if you're getting loads of punctures, if you ride super rocky stuff, sharp stuff, flint, all that kind of stuff. So not everyone needs a 2.6, 1.3 kilo super sticky tire. Just look at what you're riding. What terrain are you riding? Is it more trail orientated? Go for something lighter, because really you don't need it. These DHRs, the Shorty, I've got the Asagai as well, 
in 2.5, I think, and uh, just the regular Max Terra compound. So honestly, it makes a big difference. Don't need big, heavy, draggy tires. Right, that's been the biggest difference, I would say, the suspension on the front, the tires and the wheels. Now, I've actually got a DPX2 shock. Now, this is Fox DPX2. This is not the stock shock. The stock was a Rock Shocks, which was okay. Didn't feel like it was super sensitive on my previous bike. I was running a coil. So I was used to that um, luxury magic carpet feeling. It just tracking the ground beautifully, a coil does. And I couldn't find a coil in stock available for the Trek rail. So I saw this on eBay. It's from a Trek Slash. So the eye to eye is the same, but the stroke on it is longer. So actually, it goes from a stroke of 57.5, that's the stock stroke, and the slash has a longer stroke. So what that means is I get more rear wheel travel. It travels further, essentially. Uh, and I calculated it now to have about 163 travel on the rear, with the 170 at the front. So it's a really capable bike, and this just slotted straight in. It is very, very supple and it does blow through the first third of the travel quite quickly. And honestly, the compression tune feels like it's quite light. So I probably should get it tuned to firm up the compression on it from a suspension specialist. I haven't got around to it yet and I've done a few rides. It does handle pretty sweet. The guys on the MTB forums have got a massive Trek Rail thread where they're talking about suspension and shocks and coils. So I'll link that in the description if you want to see what other people are running. But DPX2 from a Trek rail fits and it's pretty sweet. Standard crank arms, standard chain ring that it came stuck with, ergon saddle, nice little R shelf on the back. It's got a nice little lip on it. I like the ergon stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I've changed pretty much everything other than the frame and the battery, but that's the way I wanted to do it. I like building bikes. I like experimenting with what works and what doesn't. And I like kind of just tinkering around. So that's exactly what I've done on this bike. So how does the bike handle? Bloody brilliant. It's not super long. So around 500 mil in reach, just under. Um, but it feels like the perfect kind of size for the majority of the riding that I do. All right, so what irritates me or what do I not like about the rail? There's a couple of things. I'm going to be honest, no bike is perfect and the rail is not a perfect bike. The, the electrics are brilliant. The Bosch motor is fantastic. The integration is rubbish. I do not like the massive controller on the bars. It looks proper old school. It's really easy to remove. I don't like keys. I do not think that we take stuff, they're gonna take the whole bike. They're not just gonna take a battery. Who needs keys to lock? Who's locking bikes up outside shops and uses a key to, to make sure the battery is secure? So this needs to really be changed to an Allen key and preferably one that is stashed on the bike somewhere. There's some brands that are bringing out nice little solutions with integrated um, stem mounts or even in the rear axle, and it's just a neat Allen key and you use that. All right, I'll show you, if you haven't seen it, it's a really slick operation to get it out. First of all, you need to find the key. Like my problem is I, I put the key down and I lose it. I keep it on the key ring with my car keys, but it's a massive bunch of keys. Anyway, so it comes out, the key gets stuck every now and again, like it is now. <sighs> really annoying take it out, take the battery out. There you go. So it's really nice and super easy to charge indoors. And I've been doing that a lot over the winter because uh, winter riding, want to keep the battery indoors to, to keep it charged. So I have been doing that. And I do like the fact the battery is removable. The biggest thing that frustrates me with taking the battery out is usually what I'll do is take the keys out, stuck again, you can tell, you can tell I don't like this very much. So I'll take this indoors and I'll charge it and then I'll go to put it in the bike the next day. And I could be wrong and correct me if I am, but I cannot find a way of putting the battery back in the bike without the key. So not only do you need the key to take the battery out, 
You need the key to put the bloody thing back in again. So I have to go and find my keys. I've probably taken off the key ring. Get it, put it in, put the key in, turn it around, put it in. And this has no place on an e-bike. And there has been a little bit of cable noise inside the bike. So the cable runs just under here. There's a plate inside. So I've kind of experimented by moving the wires and stuff around even put a little bit of bubble wrap in there to try and stop it slapping. And some people don't care with noise. Some people aren't bothered about it. Um, it irritates me, just winds me up when I can hear a noise and I don't know what it is. So the cable routing, had to do a little bit of work on that. And the Bosch motor optimization with your phone to uh, customize your motor in any way. You even have to go back to the dealer to get it updated. So Giant have an app with the Yamaha motor, Specialized have an app with the Mission Control, Shimano have got a really good app. Um, Bosch have nothing, and to get it updated, you have to go to your dealer. Uh, yeah, they uh, could do with sorting that out, but I can't knock it, the Bosch motor is brilliant. Like as a performer, it is so punchy in terms of the motor performance. For me, it is my favorite motor out of all the motors that I've tested on the market. And uh, once they get the integration sorted, I think it could be the one to be. It could be the class leader. What I really like about the Bosch motor is it is very, very responsive and natural feeling. Uh, but when you start applying enough torque, it really gives you a, a, a kick. It's really punchy. It's also got the override thing. So if you stamp on the pedals, it will give you a half a rotation of extra kind of oomph to clear roots and rocks. So as you're just approaching the crest and normally on a regular bike or a, a, another e-bike, you might have to put another crank rotation. You can just slam your foot down and it gives you an extra kind of rotation of the back wheel to help you clear obstacles. That EMTB mode that Bosch have developed is very, very sweet and it works really well. So the Bosch motor is a super punchy powerhouse, favorite motor at the moment. They just need to sort out the rest of the integration, the controller, get an app, just, just bring it into 2021 and don't make it look like a Nokia from 1996. So there you go, that's my Trek rail. Um, really do like the bike, despite all the little niggles. Uh, I do think Trek have got an absolute brilliant ripper. Very, very capable package, decent suspension. Some e-bikes you can get feel quite maybe um, wooden, I guess is my word to describe it. Just doesn't feel lively enough, but the, the rear suspension on this bike uh, and the frame and the geometry just all work super well together to provide a really nice engaging feel. So would I recommend the bike? Yeah, I bought it. This, this is, I spent my own money on this bike. Um, I did get a good deal on it, but, um, and I did have loads of other parts. So I don't know how long I'll keep it for. Maybe I'll keep it for a little while, but I do like to mess around and try other bikes. So maybe in a few months I'll sell it, who knows? Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know any questions you've got down below and uh, I'll catch up with you soon.